Today, I thought I would venture into the realm of clocks. Wood meets resin in a project that is as much about patience as it is about skill. A wall clock made from a pile of scrap wood and a hint of epoxy resin. Let's see where time takes us with this one. For the face of the clock, I've got this hefty piece of wood saved from a roofing job. It's about 15 centimeters square and with a bit of work, should be just right for a 60 centimeter diameter clock. First up is checking for any hidden surprises, like old nails or metal bits. I use a cheap stud detector for this. It's not a specialist piece of kit, but it does the job. Next, it's off to the thickness planer. This just helps smooth out the wood and make it friendlier to the touch. Splinters are a pain in more ways than one. Then, we begin to slice the wood into squares. Now here's the first hiccup of the day, my mitre saw is a bit small for this wood. It cuts halfway just fine, but the rest, well, that's where a good old-fashioned hand saw comes in. Pure elbow grease doing its thing. So, there's no need to fret if your tools are not exactly state-of-the-art. Where there's a will there's a way, especially in woodworking. Until I get an upgrade on my mitre saw, I'll work with what I have. Each rough edge, each imperfect cut, they all add to the charm and make it uniquely ours. Bit by bit, square by square, our clock face starts to take shape. It's like building a story, every piece has its own tale, right from the old roofing wood to my humble stud detector, it's all part of the narrative. Now that we've magically turned that large piece of wood into 16 square chunks, it's time to start bonding them together. Four at a time, these squares are laid out, covered in wood glue and clamped together, which leaves us with four rectangular strip pieces. So now it's 24 hours later and the glue's dry. It's another day, and I'm eager to get on with this clock. First stop is the table saw. Using the crosscut sled here helps ensure that at least one of these edges is cut into a straight line. Once I've got one edge straight, I can say bye to the crosscut sled. Using the newly straightened edge as a guide, it's time to get these rectangles edges parallel. Once those steps are taken care of, it's time for another round of glue. These four rectangles come together into one mega square piece, the face of our clock. So, here's another twist in the story. Just when it seems all is going to plan, life does what it does best, throws me another curveball. Turns out, this mega square won't quite stretch out to the 60 centimeters diameter I am aiming for. There are unexpected hurdles in every project, but I love these little challenges. It's time to slice some more wood. I cut four more squares from the scrap wood, slice them in half, and like before, glue them up. I'm extending the edges here just enough so that I can cut out my 60 centimeters clock face. And with that, I'm back on track. Now I've got a hefty piece of wood that spans a smidgen over 60 centimeters. The downside? My thickness planer refuses anything over 31 centimeters. Instead, I am going to have to use my homemade flattening jig. And so begins a mission not for the faint-hearted. The mess this setup creates might make the neat freak squirm, but if you aren't covered in sawdust, are you even a passionate woodworker? They say our strengths often lie in the strangest of places and mine, apparently, is perfecting the art of making sawdust. We finally come to the most gratifying part, something I've been looking forward to. Time to carve out the actual shape of the clock. First up, I sink a hole right in the middle. This marks the heart of our clock face, right where the hands will eventually sweep from. Using my circle cutting jig I carve out a near perfect circle for our clock. Next, it's about getting things a little smoother. A quick rough sanding, just to get rid of the harshest lumps. A round over along its outer edge softens it up, giving it a friendly face. Just look at that. A born-again piece of scrap wood, reincarnated as the face of a clock. Just here in its back, I'm going to cut out a recess. This pocket will eventually be home to the clock mechanism. One of the things about reclaimed timber is that it comes with a backstory etched right into it. Marks, dings and cracks that breathe character. 
To stabilize and fill the imperfections, I'm going to use some black epoxy resin. With every crevice and imperfection filled, the character of the wood just intensifies. Once the epoxy's had time to cure solid, any extra can be sanded right off. If I were to do it all over again, maybe I'd bring in the epoxy earlier before we got to the flattening and shaping. What's in store for our humble clock face here? I've been daydreaming of mountain vistas, brought to life in a sort of geometric wood off-cut pattern. A concept like this calls for some more heavy lifting from my circle cutting and flattening jigs. The design I have in mind will need me to cut a large recess in the clock face. This is not exactly an activity for a quiet Sunday. It's repetitive, it's messy, and it's going to take ages. Next up, I am paying a visit to my treasured pile of scrap wood. It's time to get creative and start fashioning the mountain shapes that will breathe life into my clock face. I'm taking a couple of these remnants and giving them a little redesign on the table saw. Once I've got these slices ready, I can cut them to size, stain and paint them. Now I have the shape of some abstract mountains with a hint of rustic charm. I can go ahead and add a coat of stain to the whole clock face before gluing these wooden strips in place. Once the glue is dry, I can measure the outer border of the clock face and mix up some emerald green epoxy. The mountainscape needs a touch of contrast and what better than a shimmering emerald green to do just that. Creating the geometric pattern inside the mountains comes next, a bit like a game of Tetris. I took some time with each slice, sanding them into smooth regular shapes free of jagged edges and splinters. Then, each piece was glued into its final place. Don't worry about them shuffling around, they'll soon be resting under a secure blanket of epoxy resin. Bit by bit, piece by piece, the mountains start to flesh out, defining themselves with sharp lines and earthy tones. It turned out pretty cool, don't you think? Moving on to the sky, because what's a mountainscape without a splash of sky blue? I've mixed up three distinct shades of blue, with a little cloudy white. Three shades of blue, ready to create a bewitching gradient sky. Slowly I pour the blues to create the gradient sky before adding the white clouds. Watching the sky scene manifest is a truly amazing experience for me. I figured this would be a great time to experiment with a new technique I've been curious about creating an epoxy pattern by blowing hot air onto it. I don't have a heat gun, but a good old-fashioned hairdryer should do the trick, I think. Trying new techniques with the risk and reward of the unknown really keeps this woodworking journey interesting. The final result looked pretty decent, although the blue shades have kind of mixed together a little. Time for a crucial stage, quite literally. I'm adding hour markers. I was not exactly sure of the best way to go about this so I had to improvise. Say hello to my daughter's protractor. This kind of precision involves a little bit of tongue biting, but I seem to have all those angles set up just right. Or close enough, at least. Once we've a road map, it's time to start cutting the markers. Here they are, rough and unrefined carved slots for those markers. To bring them to life I'm going to add some snow white epoxy. It seems like we're nearing the final stretch of this clock project so it's time for the epoxy flood coats. First, I have to give the hardened epoxy a good sanding. The sanding roughens up the surface, giving the new epoxy something to grip onto. Next, I mix up a portion of clear epoxy and apply it with a brush. I give it some time to set and then apply a second coat. After a not so brief 48 hours waiting for it to completely cure, it's time to pay a little attention to the back of the timepiece. A couple of coats of bronze epoxy to seal up the rear. In amongst all this, I squeezed in time to cut a pair of keyhole slots to hang the clock. There are just a few final touches left. 
We're adding the clock mechanism now, and it's about time to add the delicate hands. With addition of a battery, our clock inhales life and begins its eternal dance. What a journey it's been! From a discarded piece of wood to a rustic mountain-inspired wall clock, a creation that so reflects nature's imperfect beauty. I'm really chuffed how it's turned out, a labour of patience, simple techniques and mainly simple tools. What do you reckon about the outcome?